Just got back from the trip to New Zealand. Let's check on the boat. Maybe somebody came and finished. Oh, look, no, nobody did. It's still sitting in the exact same spot that it was when we left. Uh, lots to do. Nine inch pump ready to go into that boat. The brand new pump ready to go into Chris's boat out there. And this thing has got some welding to do. So that's what we're gonna get done today. Let's get back to work. Well, just got back from New Zealand and it's time to get going back on the build series. I think everybody's kind of a little bit antsy to do that. Before I do that though, I just want to comment really quick. I think we did uh, four videos total from New Zealand. I was noticing that a lot of viewers are not subscribed to the channel. I don't know if that necessarily helps out my algorithm or the money that I get, but it helps me mentally that <laughs> like I, if I don't see the subscriptions going up, I get kind of bummed out. I'm like, nobody's really watching this stuff and my views kind of stay flat. But anyway, so if you're watching these, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe so you get the bell notifications for when any new videos do come up and leave comments down below. That all helps me out and I do very much appreciate it. So let's get back to this thing. Let's talk about the build and the weld out. So I've already welded the main parts of this, the, the bigger plate stuff, but now all this, I had to get this bow deck on before I started doing any welding because all these shells hold it in position uh, before I start to weld. So here's my strategy Come in. There's a lot of seams up in here. We've got the, the center seam. We, we essentially have two where the, the chine gets welded to the bottom plate and then where the side gets welded to that chine. So there's two seams that go up there, two on each side. And then you also have a seam here and a seam up here. So we have one, two, three, four, uh, plus eight, nine seams that we have to weld going up in this bow. And what does that mean to me? That means that there's a high potential to get heat out of control because there's a lot of welding up in that forward section. So the biggest thing I got to do is move around. So I'm going to start with the bigger stuff. I'm going to start with a 3 16 up the seam, up the middle. Then I'm going to probably weld one seam on that side and one seam on that side, let everything cool down, then do the other seam, move back and forth, and then start moving up to this thinner plate and the uh, finished weld. So I'm going to get going on that. This is not fun stuff to do. Cardboard or old ratty carpet kind of helps make it not so miserable laying underneath the boat. It's uh, I'm 51 going on 52. It's not fun crawling up there to do those welds, but it's a necessary evil. Got to do it. So let's get back to work on that. Well, I am going to try to do less time lapse and more actual footage as we do this. So we'll see how this goes. I already did a little bit of welding this morning. Not much, just on the little delta pad, but uh, I'll see how this goes on the editing section if, uh, if it's a pain in the butt to, uh, to kind of speed up just some raw video footage or if it works better to do that. So you're probably going to hear me do some cussing, <laughs> some all kinds of fun stuff. But let's see how this goes. This is kind of a trial error. I got a new microphone that's tucked up here. So let's see how this goes when we are actually doing work. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me or not. I think maybe I'm just talking to myself. So here we go. Let's get some welding done. middle seams I it's very tough on the first weld you'll blow through flip the boat over and then get a good weld and then what I'll do is once that bottom is welded from the outside oh as I blind myself here and once I get it back up right I'll call back under here like I am right now and finish these off so these are just kind of the first pass Let's see how this goes <laughs> So I'm not sure if y'all heard right there, the frequency change. So what happened in that first weld to that weld, as I'm thrashing around in here, my thumb wheel got hit and I could tell it. And 
It's nice because I can sit over here with the welder and set the wire feed speed. But sure enough, that's what happened when I was moving around under there. I hit it, and as soon as I started welding, I could hear it. But I kept going for a little bit anyway to get a weld going. All right, here we go. Get back in there. There's our frequency change. Like I said, these, this seam here, it doesn't have any backing to it, so it's very easy to blow through, even though it's 3 16 plate. So uh, this very top weld, I will do this one a little bit cold, and then when I flip the boat over, I'll do that one nice and hot. So it's more structural and a, and a good weld. I really hope all this audio stuff is working out. Probably doing it, probably loud. We'll see what happens when we go to edit it. All right. There we go. Every once in a while you'll get just a little burn through let off the gun, let the molten puddle kind of settle for a minute, and then hit it with almost a tack weld. And like I said, this is not the finished weld. This is just so when I flip the boat back over, I can get up there and back gouge it and get a good weld on that other side. But uh, all right, a little bit more, about 10 to 12 inches left on this middle one. And then I'll think about it. Let it cool down a little bit. Alright, here we go. Okay. Well, let's pause there and let that cool. And I'm going to go see how that video worked out. If this is working with the audio or not. Well, it sounded like that audio is working okay, so I'm going to leave it all up to you all what you prefer. If you want to have me do this little talk along as we go, I don't really care. It doesn't really affect, um, affect my strategy out here working in the garage. It uh, it's, doesn't cost me anything more any time out to do a time lapse versus a real thing where I kind of just talk along as we go. Kind of like Derek at Vice Grip Garage. He talks the whole time and I kind of like that because you get more info on what he's doing exactly as you go along. So y'all leave in your comments down below. What do you want? Do you want me to kind of talk, pause, time lapse, talk, pause, time lapse, or would you like me to kind of talk as we go through here the one thing I'll say that if we keep doing it like this where I just keep recording the whole time the videos are going to get long so what that means there's going to be way more detail and I'll just cut them shorter they'll I don't know I'm trying to target about a 15 minute video somewhere in there so if they get too long there just won't be as much progress I guess on each video I, I don't know I'll keep going along, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys would like to see. You want to see more time lapse or this kind of stuff. So here we go. Going to get going on these outer chine. Oh, where's that wheel? On the outer chine seams out here. Uh, this is 3 sixteenths to 3 sixteenths on the first one, but then uh, 100 thousandths to 3 sixteenths on the other one. Other thing when you have a an edged edge like this, an outside edge, I feel like these are going to be smoky welds because you don't have the, you don't have a valley or a V or a, like a fillet weld where it traps the argon. So the argon, the flow kind of goes wherever it wants to. And I don't think you get quite the protection or the, whatever you want to call it, the, the pure argon uh, over that weld. So these will be sooty. And you can probably hear a little bit in the difference in it as well. So we'll see, just like I said, because it's an outside edge. So 
The other one where the side comes up, that is more like a fillet weld, so that one shouldn't be as sooty, but here we go. We'll see how this goes. My lesson learned, I always put my acetone outside of the boat so I don't catch myself on fire. I speak from experience, I've done that. So that's uh, the pro tip of the day. All right, let's, oh, this is so much fun. Here we go. or so. I can hear just the difference in the sound. Um, those turned out pretty good, but I can hear that, like I said, it's just a dirtier, sootier weld because you don't get that argon full protection. The other thing is, this uh, this bow, that's gonna trap gases up in there. I don't like being up in there for too long. I got ventilation going and it's okay, but I don't have all those, uh, you know, those breather hoods and everything else like that. So I just uh, minimize my exposure up in there, but kind of come in and out, make it quick. Oh, she would probably have a fit if they saw that I was up in there without any kind of a breather, but like I said, I'm only up there for a couple minutes. Get get in, get out. Get, that's already all cleared out of there. Working pretty good. I have put uh, a fan like my box fan over there in the on the garage. I have put fans like that in here before, and that seems to work. But it just gets too. Here we go. Hang on. I got a weld. much stuff in here small boat get fans carpet cardboard it, gets, it just gets to be too much but working with it the best i can uh, let's see these are turning out pretty good pretty happy with these uh, yeah my plan here just to kind of keep moving up here a little bit on a couple feet on that side keep a couple feet on that side uh the center seam is all done all the way up I, I think i we talked about that earlier where i did some of that weld before the deck lid came on there's no way you can climb all the way up in there and get that seam so here we go oh, man sometimes sometimes the position is just so wrong you can't i can get my hand in a spot but then i literally can't get my flipping head where i can see anything because then you lay your head down and your helmet hits the side of the boat, so... Oh, God. This is a pain. Yes. Anybody? Oh, shit. You're literally just, like, flopping around like a... 220-pound overweight fish. And it's just not fun. Sometimes... Oh, see, you can't... Uh, sometimes... Maybe I'll go backwards. I just can't get my body in the position where my arms and the weld are in the right spot and I can actually see. So let's, start, let's try this. That might work a little bit better. I can go up here back. There's the ticket. All right, now I can see my hands are in a good spot. That was fun. Here we go. the ticket spin around backwards and do it I don't know if that's gonna work all the way up here or not but I'll see if I can get I'm 
let this gas clear out of here or the smoke just a little before I get back up in there. I think I had a couple tacks pop up there. I can see that maybe I'll go to those now. A couple tacks popped. Uh, putting that bow deck lid on. Not a big deal. I just don't want to get too much welding until I re retack those things. Because the next thing you know, you'll be having some problems with your fit. And where are they? Yeah, right here. You know what? Get my ball peen ready because as soon as you tack that, that tack well is still warm and you can close up the gap. So I'm going to hit it with a little tack. Then hit it with the ball peen immediately after. Just like that. A little tap while, while that metal is still warm. I can't tell. A couple of these popped. Or maybe they didn't, but I'll go ahead and warm them back up anyway. Get those tacks right back down to nothing. And you can see it when that when that goes down to zero, there's almost no light coming through there. And I'm not a painter, but what are they saying? Painting is like Prep is everything, right? So it's almost the same thing when you go to weld. Like, fit up is everything. If it's not, if you don't have that down to zero, zero gap, you are asking for trouble and a crappy looking boat and a crappy looking weld. So it pays dividends to take your time now get those gaps done get them completely down to zero like i just did now i don't see any light through there hardly at all just by taking your time to do that and it's attention to detail like you got to be completely anal retentive and don't accept uh you know any kind of gap but anyway all right i think i'm gonna go take a break get some water let that cool us a little bit more Oh, these jobs they're just not all that fun so crawling back in the boat take a little break crawling back in the boat it's like pulling teeth it's just not something you really want to do not something you get really excited about but it is just a necessary evil i guess so gotta do it not too much more to weld up in here i don't know a couple feet on each side for this scene but We'll get these done. And then I have a new strategy. I'm kind of excited to try out what I do with my gloves. Ah, uh, they're over on the bench, of course. Do you know how many times in a build I go inside the boat, outside the boat, back inside the boat? I would probably guess about 500,000 times I go in and out of this boat. No joke, because every time Whatever I need, it's on the wrong side. So, anyway, here we go. We're going to get up in here. Get these last things welded up. And on to bigger, better, and more fun things. Like grinding welds. There's even more fun. Not. Grinding welds. Is even more miserable than this. I don't grind all of them, I just grind the ones that on the outsides out here and stuff like that. All right, let's see. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get up here far enough inside. Oh yeah. Gotta get creative. Okay. All right. Fun times. Holy crap. All right, here we go.
All right, well, I got, uh, I had an issue with the microphone, so I'm going to just put some music to a bunch of that stuff where my microphone wasn't working, but I got all these top outside welds. They're not the prettiest. Like I said, it doesn't matter. I just had to fill in that V in there. These will get ground, and then I'm going to do weld on the backside, but I still need to get this seam up here welded, so I'm going to do that right now.